can't buy It resides between my eyes Walk through the fire Came out better on the other side See life's like a peach If you find the same And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders and their challenges, their ups and downs. And, and uh, before I introduce today's guest, Guy and Reuven, um, you know, I like to point people to, to other episodes. Uh, and I've had this amazing, they're part of the, the Israel Business Leader Series. I had Moise Navone of Mobileye, um, and he talked about the Mobileye journey of being acquired by Intel. Uh, for $13.2 billion, uh, which is amazing. I had uh, Yossi Vardy and John Medved, and they came on separately and they talked about their journey. And, you know, I made them talk about their biggest misses, who they didn't invest in, which in retrospect, it's always 2020, but who, so you have to listen to those episodes um, to hear who were their biggest misses that they're like, I cannot believe I passed on that. Um, that and many more on inspiredinsider.com. Uh, this episode is brought to you by Rise25. I co-founded with my business partner, John Corcoran, and we help businesses give to and connect to their Dream 100 partnerships and clients. Um, we do that by helping you run your podcast. So, you know, in my life, you know, Guy and Ruben, the number one thing in my life is relationships. So I'm always looking at giving to my best relationships, profiling the companies I love and the people I love, on my podcast to get them more exposure. And that, my podcast has been the best thing I've done for my business and my life. So if someone has questions, you can go to rise25.com. And also, you know, it's inspired, both of you may appreciate this, um, by my grandfather who was a Holocaust survivor. And um, the, his legacy lives on because uh, the Holocaust Foundation did an interview with him, which is on my about page of Inspired Insider. Mm -hmm. So there's an hour long interview with him talking about the atrocities that happened. And so if you are okay with graphic detail, uh, then I would check that uh, interview out. It's on inspiredinsider.com slash the about page. Uh, so check that out uh, as well. So before, no further ado, I want to um, introduce today's guest. A big thank you to Guy uh, Barner. I don't know if you, if you, either of you know him, but he's like, you must have Kaha Robotics on. You must have him on. So thank you, Guy. Um, and Yuri Adoni, uh, Doni, uh, the author of Unstoppable Startup, um, Mastering Israel's Secret Rules of Chutzpah. So check that out. So, but I've, Guy Glass is one of Israel's e-commerce pioneers, founded Style River, the first fashion e-commerce site in Israel, and his role as CTO and CEO. What he did is he experienced huge challenges. If anyone's had an e-commerce site, they've experienced challenges in the world of fulfillment, especially, I don't care what's going on, it's always about the operations. And it led him to search for an economic warehouse robotic solution, uh, which was adapted to his needs uh, for infrastructure. So he partnered with Dr. Alan Cohen, Danny Frischman, and uh, Ruben Del Torre and, um, for Caja Robotics. So check it out. If you haven't seen their videos on YouTube, they're remarkable. You know what robotics, what robots can actually do. And um, Reuven is also experienced in robotics, media content providers, telecom, web, mobile markets, a CTO, and he's a deep knowledge of autonomous guided robots, warehousing, video streaming, communication. Thank you both for being here, all the way from Israel. Yep. Hi. Thank you. So I wanted to start with, you know, Guy, go back to the idea. Mm -hmm. Behind so, as, yes, so as you said, we had uh, 2009, I founded Style River with my partner, uh, and we sold most of our share to the biggest media company in Israel, uh, Keshet Marco. It was around 2012. And back then, after we started growing dramatically, uh, we started to look for a robotic solution to our own use. And from the beginning, I had a few, uh, a few uh, uh, things that I, it was like a demand for me. Uh, I wanted to look for a, a robotic solution with very low ROI, something that uh, will not require for me to change the infrastructure, that I can keep use my own shelving, can keep use my own floor, my own boxes. And back then, the only thing I, I found in the market, it was Kiva system that later on acquired by Amazon. Uh, so I came with this concept to develop a, a very flexible, very uh, scalable uh, 
רובוטיק סולושן. The company that I work for Style River, uh, after I saw most of my share didn't want to invest in this uh, technology. So at the middle of 2014, formally I quit the company. I joined, as you mentioned, with Ilan, uh, Dr. Ilan Cohen and uh, uh, Danny Frischman to found, we founded the uh, Kaha. Uh, two months, one month or two months later, already uh, also Ruben joined us. Uh, first, year, first year we just ran for our uh, money we took out of our pocket. Uh, only ideas and sketches, but basically we started to recruit employees and raise money only a year after. So what you will see in our site and our technology is basically around five years. So and then from this uh, five years, uh, most of the time we develop our uh, technology. And in the last uh, year, year and a half, we really start to sell and install our uh, system. Yeah. And, and so... You know, Ruben, in a second, I'll have you talk about the technology, but, but Guy, it seems like a huge undertaking, you know, starting a robotics company. It's not like there's no minimum, minimum viable product that you could just go out the door and start testing right away. What, what made you, I'm not going to say crazy enough to be like, I'm going to undertake this. It seems like a big project. Yeah, it's, it's a big project, uh, but uh, our vision from the beginning was, is, I think the cloud technology is a good example for that. We try, we are trying to uh, put as much as possible uh, efforts in the software side and to do something very elastic, very flexible. And that is why of the, uh, I mean, one of the main reasons, my background, I'm a software engineer in a room and also we'll talk also, we have a huge experience, uh, also master degree in uh, mathematics and uh, and uh, software. Uh, so uh, this is our concept. The concept is to build uh, machines that based on the cloud, based on software, uh, the robots, uh, the, the brain of the robot should be in the cloud. And in that way, we have a lot of flexibility. So we had a lot of uh, comfort from the beginning that we can achieve that by uh, uh, very low investment in terms of hardware and invest most of our efforts in software. And as you know, I assume most of the people know that Israel is most familiar in this software capabilities and less in the hardware. And this is what we try to achieve. Then I think we achieved it. Yeah. yeah. And I want to talk about the first year, but uh, Ruben, talk about, so Guy comes to you with this idea, okay? You have a lot of experience in a lot of different realms. How did he convince you to join the team and, the, and you know, work on this? Yeah. Yeah. First of all, yeah, it's a good, you're right. I first, first time that I heard about it, it was for me a huge challenge thinking about having a multidisciplinary uh, system like that with the hardware, with mechanic, uh, electronics, uh, software embedded, et cetera. Uh, starting it from from scratch uh, is challenging. I think that this is one of the main things that uh, uh, make me um, very enthusiastic from the beginning. Uh, for me, to, to I didn't have uh, such a wide system before that I uh, read from scratch. So for me, it was uh, uh, a real challenge that I wanted to participate with. Um, actually, I got to Guy from our first chairman of the company, uh, so I knew him. I was just uh, leaving uh, my former company that was uh, sold to Yahoo, so it was acquired by you can, Yahoo. You and, can uh, tell the name, uh, Robert. The yeah, name it's of Gigi the Levy. Chairman. Yeah, so Gigi Levy, uh, I don't know if you are acquainted with, but anyhow, is one of uh, the... I would say the one of the angels or the most uh, one of the most uh, um, main that said the angels here in Israel. Yeah, I think so, I was reading uh, about is it like I Angel and he's one right. of the main the founders of I Angel. Yeah, yes, right. also that. Yeah, yeah. yeah also. NFX, yeah, but, by the way, also uh, NFX uh, from uh, from the Silicon Valley, the venture capital. Mm. 
Right. So, yeah, so I had a chat with him. I came with, uh, I, was, I was just discussing with uh, Gigi uh, a few of my ideas, maybe to start a, a new startup. And, and he said, okay, uh, if you want me on board if, with whatever idea that you come, I, I'm in favor, but you have first to check out with Guy. Uh, and I think that this is, uh, it's, it's a great uh, chance, uh, uh, to do really something big. So, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I met with Guy, he had the uh, uh, first time it was, as he said, um, really, um, shocking a little bit. Okay. Well, we are starting from, from scratch, uh, something, uh, but then, uh, as I said, so we started to, uh, to take all the components, say, okay, let's do it in the best way, thing that you, we don't find right now in the market. Is, and we were very innovative in the concept uh, uh, even today, but in that time, for sure. So, um, uh, and the main thing that uh, I propose, let's go to, uh, to as much software as we can, and let's uh, leave the hardware, let's say, uh, as basic as can be, uh, and uh, and I think that we are on this concept from day one. So that was a strategy for the first year. Let's just make the software amazing and put in a simple hardware package. So it's not uh, that's where I guess you can help people provide a economic solution. That's correct, but it's not just the first year because I think that. Uh, this is the main concept that uh, is uh, is escorting us uh, from day one, and uh, we are still with this, uh, we are trying to have as much logic as we can in the cloud, and and have the robots doing whatever they need to do, and it's uh, and and it's uh, interface with the warehouse itself, but but all the all the business logic uh, is not there. Uh, and uh, we are doing things that uh, uh, other competitors are not even uh, 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 didn't went to this uh, path, let's say. So uh, you will find that we are doing nearly everything in the cloud. Talk about the technology. Uh, for people who haven't seen the videos, um, watching the little Kaha robot, uh, robots kind of just stream around the warehouse, talk about what, what it does. Okay, so, so, so Robert, oh, okay. No, no, go, words, go, go ahead, no. guy. Okay, so, so a few words, a few words about the concept. The concept of the system, again, is that uh, every components we develop, even right now, new, new components, new feature, everything that driven us is the, if it's not fit to scalable and flexible, is not entering to to our system. Means. Uh, our system, we can integrate very tolerant to so almost any type of a floor. We can comp- be compatible with any type of a shelf. You don't need like most of the other solution that need a very unique shelving. We don't need a very unique shelving. We can integrate to almost any type of a shelf. We are very tolerant to so almost any type of a box. It can be plastic box, it can be beans, it can be towed, it can be carton box. Uh, so everything and based on that is our robots again our robots again if you can compare it to uh, you can compare most of the robotic system as to autonomous car means that they are very autonomous they when they have a problem they 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 solve it by their own like autonomous car we have a very different concept so uh, our robots are enabler and they get mission if something, if they cannot do a, a, a task that's sent from the cloud, they're reporting it back and the cloud decides, well, everything, we think that in terms of optimization, we can achieve more. And again, this also serving us in terms of uh, flexibility, flexibility, because if tomorrow morning we want to add additional manpower, we just send you robot, they click the button, uh, wait for the 30 second robot joined his friends and and, and start to work so this is what uh, in terms of technology uh, in terms of let's say in terms of product what we want to achieve and what we achieve what are the biggest when- pain points why are why are people buying the system 
what are the biggest pain points it's solving for them? And was it different from what you thought originally? Yeah, I can tell you in terms of originally when we started the system, uh, on top of that, we thought that uh, our, uh, our robots not only uh, bring boxes to the picking station, but they also build the infrastructure of the warehouse itself. Mm. But uh, so we change a little bit and eventually we understand that the infrastructure is very, very expensive. So it's better to integrate for with existing infrastructure that is currently in the market. Uh, I think the main challenges for us is first of all, you know, small company in terms of business, you know, small company from Israel at the beginning. Uh, I think people like, uh, it's, it's, it's not so easy to, to integrate to a startup company, especially in the hardware world when you, uh, you need almost 100% uptime. So I think a lot of people are afraid of that. Uh, and I think this is the, the, currently this is our main challenge because in terms of concept of the system and how it, it works, everybody really like the concept. But I think uh, some of the customers are less uh, early adapters. So for us, this is I think the main challenge. Uh, in terms of cloud, everybody like the cloud. At the beginning, we saw that people like to install in-premises servers, but as time goes by everybody understand this is a huge advance for them to be in the cloud. So it was a, a huge challenge at the beginning and right now it's, it's uh, something that uh, is not really a uh, huge stuff. And, and again, currently at the, in, in, in this period with the coronavirus, uh, I think uh, it, it's a huge challenge uh, how you can do a remote support uh, how you can uh, support your customer. Again, we talked about it. We already have uh, support in the, the States. Again, we design our system in such way that every component of our robot connected to the cloud means the, the motors, the driver, all the sensor, everything connect to the cloud. And we know uh, that's why we can do a lot of predictive maintenance and, and we control everything remotely. And of course, at the end, if we need something inside and we have a uh, support and service in the state, so in that way. Uh, when, you, when you were getting, before your first customer and you were testing it, how did you test it? How did you te test the software and then the hardware together? So uh, we started in the beginning, uh, we had not like a usual startups that uh, take uh, two rooms and are working on the software. We had to take uh, a lot of, of uh, space and uh, we took it uh, in Benyamina in Israel. Um, we had a lab uh, that was about uh, 200, 300 square meters. Uh, and uh, we started working with the uh, robot that we manufacture for the lab. Uh, we built up a, a small warehouse and um, and with the uh, with experience of guy of working in real warehouses uh we knew what we are looking for and uh, that's that's the starting point that we started so eventually we had two uh i think uh, very big uh, advantages when we started uh to sell one was the lab as i said and the second was that uh, customers came and we have a very unique uh simulation tool that it's uh, uh, realistic in its real uh, simulation. It's not something that um, trying to simulate the, uh, the reality, but it, uh, it's one-to-one -one with the reality. So we started to show them um, real, uh, re a real virtual warehouse running on their data that they provided to us. Uh, so they started to look at it and says, uh, we know these orders, these are our, orders, these are our SKEs. Uh, amazing that uh, these virtual robots know how to take uh, the, the, the boxes and stuff and, and bring it to the picking station. And it uh, was uh, very convincing. So uh, big, uh, uh, big customers uh, were, were willing to, 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 to really uh, start looking into our solution uh, in depth. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think one of the selling points is let the robotics do kind of the 
minute details and then send it to the human who needs to do certain human checks. Yes, that- so, so yeah, you're right. We are saving, and actually I think most of the robotic solution, everyone have its own approach, but most of the, uh, the, uh, the let's say, uh, the solution, robotic solution that use sterilized area, uh, I'm not talking about collaborative robot, most of them save around 80% from the labor cost. The rest of the, rest of the 20% is based on what we call picking stations. So the robot brings the boxes to the picking station, a human pick an item, the screen tell him, you need to pick this item, put it in customer order, and that. so this is around 20%. Uh, by the way, other very nice startups that are trying to solve the, the pick and, pick, uh, uh, pick and place, as in place uh, solution, this to focusing on this 20%. Uh, so uh, yes, we are saving this 80%, as you said, bringing the boxes to the picking station and from there, a human pick and put it in the customer order. Talk about the first few customers. I imagine, you know, like you said, you need an early adopter, right? And talk about um, how it was getting the first few customers. So first customer we had, uh, one of them was from Germany, again, connected from one of our uh, investors. Uh, it's a company called Via Store. It's uh, distributed, uh, actually, uh, this is a distribution uh, company that uh, they have their own technology, uh, but also distribute other technology. Uh, we did with them pilot. Uh, and it was in Germany. And the other one that uh, is company called uh, Bergen Logistics, they are based in New Jersey. Uh, 3PL, third party logistics, uh, be, uh, focusing on the fashion industry. Uh, so again, we met with them uh, just at the beginning, let's say it was like uh, 2016, uh, we, the introduction made by one of our small shareholders. I did the introduction, the, the product wasn't mature enough, so we stopped and after two years later, we reconnect with them. Uh, again, the, the product was more mature, but still not only final, so they started as really as, as partner with us. Uh, we start to jump on that together. Uh, they really helped us on, in, in terms of designing and we start very small. We start with only two robots around 100, 150 square meter, around 1,000 square foot of warehouse, very small. And we grew every, grow every like uh, one month, two months. We added additional space. We added additional, uh, uh, additional robots. We did a lot of changes based on their experience, based on their uh, requirement. Uh, we send their, the, our engineers and one of our QI guys uh, did relocation for one year to, to Bergen Logistics before we recruit someone that uh, someone uh, uh, to That's our lovely. US yes US subsidiary. So we started step by step. It wasn't so easy. We had a lot of problems at the beginning, a lot of glitches, a lot of stops. But uh, both sides knew in advance uh, that it will take time in order to stabilize the system. And right now we are running there with uh, 25 robots uh, around more than 2,000 square meter, around 20,000 square foot wow. of a warehouse. We have there uh, around 25,000 boxes running there. And pretty soon we'll expand this area uh, all uh, expand this area, probably multiple this area, and again looks really uh, promising uh, and very very good. What do you? Anyway, the, some of some yeah. of the videos you sh- you have seen before yeah. uh, is from from this location. Yes, yes, yeah. exactly. What do you yeah. think that saves them from time or human labor having twenty robots? Yes, yeah, so. We saved them, first of all, space. Space because, uh, first of all, we go higher. You know, uh, 
regular picker, in terms of manual, can pick around efficiently up to 1.8 meter high, and we can go two times higher. So first of all, in terms of space, uh, not only in terms of uh, physical space, but also in terms of optimization. We know how to do consolidation, take, you know, boxes that left with only small items, connect them together and things like that. So the space is more efficient. And also in terms of uh, inbound, the inbound process in our system is very easy because we can use any type of a box. The, the inbound process is very, very quick. Just take boxes, put it in regular shelf. Robot come from the other side. So labor costs in terms of inbound and labor costs in terms of, uh, of course, labor in terms of uh, pickers that would need to walk in the warehouse. And of course, mistakes, by the way, like three or four months, no, actually right now with the corona, around six months ago, we also closed the light in this warehouse. So think about it around. I saw uh, that. The, yeah, the robots right. have like little headlights on them. Yes, right. exactly. So, so uh, around 20,000 square foot without a light at all, imagine in terms of uh, mm. uh, air conditioning and lights, yeah. how much it can save them yeah. in terms of... What made you think of that? That seems like something I would never think, you know, just let's turn off the lights and let the robots <laughs> do, see. What, what made care. you think of that? Because they don't care. Well, <laughs> I know, but I don't know if out. I would even thought to do that, but yeah. <laughs> No, it's actually, yeah, we I can tell you. Oh, we we can over. say even that one of our pilots were in a place that people couldn't wear because it was 50 degrees uh, Celsius uh, heat, uh, that place. And, I, and they, it was a useless space for them. And we said, you know, you can put robots and they can, it can work. So actually, the beauty is that where robots can work in an environment that people are not able to work. Yeah. So light, heat, uh, et cetera. What did you learn from the first install? Like you said, there's always the first time going to be glitches or customizations. What did you learn from the first install that you brought to the next one to make it easier? Mm, I think that uh, um, actually um, the main thing I think that uh, uh, we found that uh, when you are testing in lab in a very good uh, environment, uh, um, it, it's too sterile. So you will not, uh, you will not real have real life problems like you have in real uh, warehouses. And one of the advantages that might be a disadvantage, but it was an advantage from this perspective, that this warehouse that we started with is not uh, the best, uh, let's say, surface and the best space mm. that someone can uh, think about. So we had a lot of challenges that we didn't think even that we will uh, find and occur in, in worlds as we find them there. And we had to, to, to find solutions. So that's one of the main things. Yeah. What's the difference? I think, selling? I yeah, think go ahead, by go. the way, Jeremy, yeah. Jeremy, it's never, never underestimate the challenges. Yeah. Never. <laughs> <laughs> is it kind of like the military? Is it kind of like the army? Yes, something like that. But we always, you know, you want to to promise the customer it will be good, that it will work. Don't worry. And and but yeah, you know. Yeah, by the way, I, I but between two of us, you know, between me and Ruben, I mean, between me and Ruben, I am the one that uh, don't worry, it will work, and always <laughs> uh, Ruben tell me. How it will work? It will not work. Yeah, we don't need to ever test it. Uh, so uh, we have some kind of a balance between. Uh, yeah. As, as years go by, yeah. In Roven, no, uh, you know, even without talking, we we know how to to uh, to to know each other in terms of what yeah. we can and what we can do. I could hear yeah. that. I could hear that from the first conversation you had. Because I could see you going, listen, this is going to be the best thing. And then I could see Ruben's brain going, well, how, how are we going to do that? Like, look at all this <laughs> stuff we need to create to get to what you're talking about. Like, you're probably like, don't worry about it. Ruben's like, I'm worried about it. Yeah, but yeah, you, have to, you have to see that something that we have really, a, the, the idea, the, the concept is so great 
that this customer that came in the first time, he really didn't see anything. Uh, you can imagine after half a year that we had uh, this, uh, this startup. So, uh, he, but he understood the, 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 the concept. He understood that this is a really an innovative concept that he didn't see any, any, anywhere. So he has the, the patient to go with us and to say, okay, I understand in the first time it will not be easy. But, uh, you know, as time passed, they became more and more enthusiastic once they saw it running and, and working. What seems to be the motivator for the companies that want to take this on? Is it like uh, work staff? Is it space? What is the motivator for them to pull the trigger to be like, okay, we're going to take this. You know, it's, it's not just a, time, a money investment. It's just a time to get it right. What, what do you think their biggest motivator is? Um, I see, uh, tell, tell why I see. I think that uh, we are looking for customer that again, if our main uh, advantage is in terms of flexibility and scalability, so we are looking for customer that flexibility and scalability is the most important thing for them. For example, three PL that have a lot of very different type of customers. So they need a lot of flexibility. So if uh, they took customer and put it in our, their customer in our system, and tomorrow morning their customer will leave them and another customer come to their, uh, to their facility with different boxes. And if the, autom- the automated or robotic system cannot fit for that, so this is not flexibility. Mm. So they need a flexibility. If customer grow, e-commerce customer that grow 20, 30% a year, he must have flexibility, he must act fast. So if he uh, wants to open a new, uh, a new warehouse in uh, six months, uh, and he know we can move our system without almost zero downtime, without a, a huge investment in terms of CapEx, you know, this is flexibility. So we are looking for customer. If customer, you know, it's a B2B customer, grow 1%, 2% a year, very limited number of SKU, don't have any spikes like Cyber Monday, Black Friday, very stable. This is not the customer we are looking for. And actually those customers are not looking for us. We are looking for customers that look for flexibility and scalability. So yeah. this, is, this, is where, this is the first thing I do with customers that call us. This, the, there are a few questions that relate to flexibility and scalability. If it's not fit there, I can recommend them a other solution, but not our solution. Yeah. So when you say, you know, flexibility, do you mean size of packages and weight of packages? Or what is, what is flexibility? It's, flexibility it's means, yes. Go ahead. Yeah, it's shelves. We, we can work with uh, nearly any kind of shelves, mm-hmm. any kind of boxes. We don't, you don't have to change anything. Uh, you can, um, you can, uh, add space or, or decrease space. You can close part of the warehouse for the robot and then open it the day after. Uh, nothing is changing. Uh, you, you are using the same software. You just have to configure. And this configuration is really intuitive and very easy. So um, it, it's, it, it's really a thing that uh, it, it's go without saying from the customer perspective that if he has a new challenge, he, he knows that we, we don't have to, to, to find a solution that will be tailored for him. Our, our system is flexible enough to, 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 to absorb it and contain it and, and, and work with it. So that's, uh, you, you can add robots, uh, decrease robots. You don't have to, to, to configure it anywhere. Just put a robot in. Uh, switching on, and he will start working with the system. So nothing is is too complex to change. That that's the main thing there. Yes. So uh, yes, yes, I agree. For example, if you know customer wants to, let's say he bought uh, uh, shelving from specific uh, manufacturer, and tomorrow he wants to add uh, additional two aisles without uh, from different manufacturer, or he wants to replace the boxes for different size of boxes. Uh, he wants to move between warehouses. Uh, he wants it to change the structure of the warehouse. Again, as Ruben said, add more robots, remove robots. He can do whatever he likes, very easy. 
Uh, and you know, on Cyber Monday, he wants to list a few more robots for these spikes. It's very easy. So uh, again, flexibility is the key. So I have two questions for each of you, and then I want to end on Guy a, um, a crazy, not top secret IDF story, mm-hmm. Israel defense story. Um, something is not top secret because I don't want to have <laughs> shared anything on here. It's, it's gonna get, someone's going to hunt you down. But, um, but for, there are two questions for each of you first. Um, what's been a really big low point or challenge point? And then on the flip side, what's been a proud moment? Reuven, you want to start, what's been a challenge, a big challenge moment or low point? You know, because obviously any startup, any company, there's its peaks and valleys. Right. I think that um, for me at least, uh, one of the main was quite in the beginning when we had a a little bit uh, different concept in the beginning that uh, we wanted to work with uh, stackable bins. That was the the idea. And we were working on this concept and then uh, came this uh, first customer, via store as the guy mentioned, and they said, look, this is what will not work. And in the first second, it was like saying, you know, you have a great concept, but it will not work, just change it. And it took us, um, you know, one day to, to say, okay, let's, let's go to the drawing again. Let's start from the beginning and think how we can use the same technology, the same thing, but changing the concept. I think that this was one of the great thing as well, because eventually yeah. that gave us this flexibility that right now it's, uh, from our perspective, every new design is, we are thinking first, is it flexible? Is it scalable? Is it elastic? If yes, okay. If not, let's leave it. Yeah. It's a bit, I mean, I don't know if it's like a, it's, it's not meant to be a slap in the face, but it's like you're working so hard behind the scenes and then someone in one second just goes, no, not going to work. Like, okay. <laughs> you almost have a straight face and go, okay, I, I hate you right now. Um, Guy, what about you? What's been a big challenge moment or a low point? I think, first of all, it's something that relates to the software. You know, at the beginning, we just uh, need to remember that, that, that we need to remember that, that we had a conversation. What would be the concept? of the system, how, how much autonomous or non-autonomous will give to our robots. Mm. Uh, and at the end, we decide to go with the approach that will not give them the ability to be a real autonomous robots. And every, and, and it was a really huge challenge because we didn't find anyone at the market that doing something like that. Everybody told us that we are crazy to do something like that. It requires a lot of computing power and things like that. And, and and the the opposite side for that was that it was for me uh, only after win. So it was only a year, I think, uh, more than a year from now, not a little bit more than a year from now, that I came to Bergen and I saw more than ten robots working together on this concept based on the cloud. Nothing installed in this warehouse. We have five mega bandwidth of warehouse. Ten robots work perfectly because before that it's run on simulation and Ruben told me the simulation is exactly what you can expect in the real world and I it, it was hard to believe and <laughs> to, 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 to be there I remember that I like stood there around for four hours on the same place looked at the robot took videos sent to all my friends all the employees all my investor everyone it was amazing uh, it was amazing and, and it took me to see that around four years more than four years and and it it was i was really proud of that that was a proud moment for you yeah i can imagine like four years of work you know seeing it in action yeah right you know before that we saw you know one robot two robots three robots but when you start to work on you know real production site with more than 10 robots it's really it's amazing yeah yeah, and, when we started, it, it was something that was really disruptive because 
no one uses uh, and this kind of, of navigation the way that we are using it. And um, it was something, we have a patent, of course, on it. But uh, when we started, I, yeah, I, I remember the discussion with this guy that he said, look, if this is, will not work, we are going all home and we don't have anything, you know, it, and I said, look, I, I am going to it because if it will work, this is something that no one will be so, it, it, will, not, it will not be easily adopted by others. And yeah, eventually it seems to work. Because if it works, it's a tough road. There's a moat there. Someone can't just start this up in, in a day. I mean, there's a lot of work that goes behind it. So it's very protectable in that sense. <clears throat> but first of all, thank you, both of you. Uh, everyone could check, check out Kaha Robotics. Um, it's C-A-J-A -A, uh, Robotics. And um, check out what they're doing. Check out some of the videos and you can go to kaharobotics.com um, to check out what they have going on. So I figured, <clears throat> Guy, we'll leave people with, you know, I, I ask about the IDF story, Army story, because it's not just for fun, but because, you know, it's part of what gives the, the resilience and the decision making and the risk taking to Israel that's unique to Israel. Right. And, yeah. you know, any of the people I've, t I've interviewed talk about that, you know, having that experience is, is huge from a, you know, maturity standpoint, from a risk taking standpoint. So I'm wondering one of the IDF, you know, um, experiences that shaped you. And plus, yeah, like, we need, you know, we were talking about Fauda before we hit record, so I have to. <laughs> yeah, there are a few, and I, I will not talk about it here, but I agree with you that uh, in terms of uh, risk, uh, it's not something we are afraid to, to take. We are familiar to, uh, to, to be failed. Uh, we want to run pretty fast. A lot of the time, I'm, I'm, it's not, again, st you know, startup, it, it's, like, it's like a life, you know. It start at the beginning, you need to run pretty fast. And in Israel, we know how to run pretty fast. You know, we start to run, and a lot of the time, we, we start to run, and only after that, we start to think. Uh, uh, and this is, I think, one of the advantages, the huge advantage here in Israel. Uh, but... On the other hand, we need to understand that it's not good for, uh, for uh, it's good for a certain point of the company and, from a, and a, for a certain point you need to, to change the state of mind and, and, and move it. Uh, and by the way, you, that's why of the reason you see a lot of startup companies in Israel uh, selling a, in very uh, short period because in Israel, still, we don't have a lot of experience how to take a small company and convert it to a huge, uh, a huge uh, company. It's not so easy. Uh, it's, we can see more and more on that uh, here in Israel, but it's only a matter of time. Uh, and I think, yes, this is one of the things we learned from the army. Again, a huge advance, but uh, we need to understand that there are also a, a lot of disadvantage in this this kind of approach. So, yeah, any but I think right. I think that uh, eventually you learn how to fail. Uh, I think in the army you know that uh, you have always to have plan B. You always have to think what happened if, and this is something that uh, not everybody are uh, uh, used to think in this way. I think that's why I said to you in the beginning that one of the challenges was, that, okay, they told us this is not the concept, look and think about. So, you know, it's easy to fail in this, in this part. And, but, but, you know, okay, we'll find a way. We have to find a way because that's the only way that we can uh, really succeed. So I think that eventually from, from the army, all of us learned uh, how to handle very complex situations and and always to think what happened if i read it on your site <laughs> but i didn't know it beforehand yeah, it's actually got a lot of meaning it's some kind of a slang you know so if you're uh, uh it's like because you know if your kid asks you something and you don't have patience to answer him said him why because 
just do it because the kafka. <laughs> so so this is one of the meaning and a lot of uh, a lot of other meaning. So we like the combination of our robot move boxes in the most optimal way, and we like the combination with the Israeli word. So yeah, box in Spanish and Israeli. Just do it because right right right. So everyone check out Kaja Robotics, C-A-J-A robotics.com. Thank you both for, for sharing the journey. Thank you, Jeremy. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See lights like a peach if you find